Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us today. So, um, something a bit different than the usual kind of lawn streams that we do. You're saying that, though, we, we have had a bit of change over the last few weeks. But I watched the Vincent Ambrosio footage for the first time a number of weeks ago, uh, and I thought it was a really intriguing case. Uh, there's many elements which make it interesting for me. Um, and... I wanted to get the opinion of some other people, and uh, I just thought, who better than somebody who's actually been to the court case? Um, with me uh, is, as ever, my good friend Shins Koala. Hello, sir. Hello, guys. Uh, and uh, Joey's Tea Cap Channel is here to recount us with his amazing tale of actually going to <laughs> the. Uh, Going to and and you know ordinarily I'd poke fun at him and say what the fuck were you doing there? But I flew to another continent to go to one of these. Exactly, fuckers. it was only an hour for me. Exactly, so I can't I can't poke fun at anyone. So are right. we um are we going? Yeah, you're on a different video, but yeah, you're going. Right, cool. Um, right, so um, Joey, you might as well take it Andy. from here and tell us what happened, dude. Oh, you want me to just kick off on yeah, the uh, please. On the court dates? Just tell us. Okay. Just tell us your story, and then we'll we'll talk a little bit more about him. Sure. Um, this was back in um, in 2016, and I think it was September of 2016. They you know started listing dates because a lot of these people were like Ambrosio was going to take it to court, Sokol was going to take it to court, Charles Lawrence was going to take it to court, and uh, and Michael Gentile was going to take it to court. So they still hadn't had their court dates, but then they all decided to settle. And I went up to um, Fairfield, and I saw Dupee get sentenced. Oh, I didn't know and that. I, yeah, That's I went cool. there with uh, with Ethan Griswold. Remember Ethan Griswold? Which one was that? Who who was that? He he was a uh, lornographer. He was the guy that bought Lauren's clothing at the Sting House and then torched it with a flamethrower in his back. Oh, that's e Ethan, right? Ethan, right? Yeah. yeah. So we went up and saw um, Dupee get sentenced, and that was fun. Um, and he wasn't available. There were some other people that wanted to go to see Vincent get sentenced. And this was, I think, in November of 2016. And I had made a public post somewhere like, you know, if anybody wants to go and some people are like, yeah, I want to go, but I don't want to drive the whole way. So I said, I'll meet you by this bridge and we'll go and things like that. But it turned out nobody ended up going except except for me. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, you know, it's about an hour away, maybe a little less than an hour, but I left early just in case it was traffic, you know, because it's morning rush hours on a Friday and uh, there wasn't any traffic. So I got there pretty early and I hung out out front. You know, maybe you got there at 845 in the morning and uh, court started at 930. So I hung out out front until almost 930 and I never saw Ambrosio come in and he was out on bail. So he wasn't like being brought in from the jail. He was out on bail and he never came in. So I said, shit, well, I better get up there. Maybe they postponed it. And I go up there. And Ambrosio and his family were sitting on a on a bench um, outside the courtroom, and the bailiff had come out and said there was only one criminal judge and one criminal courtroom in this whole court building. It's mostly like bankruptcies and like landlord tenant issues or evictions and stuff like that. So that's what mostly what happens in this courthouse. But they have one courtroom and one judge set aside for the criminal matters, and he was needed for some kind of other emergency case. So it was going to be a delay, and it turned out to be like a two hour delay. How did he get did, past you, Joey, without you saying, did he get he, there he earlier? He was there early. He got there yeah. earlier. So there's, you know, two benches and a couple of wooden chairs, but most people are standing. And Ambrosio's there with his mom and dad and, like, aunt and uncle, I think. And uh, and, and and he was just sitting straight ahead. I don't know if he was sedated or what, but he wasn't talking. He wasn't moving or whatever. And I didn't want to leave because they don't tell you when the judge is going to come back. So they just say, you know, there's a delay, so hang tight. And I don't have a lawyer to confer with, so you know I, I have nobody I can talk to about it. So I'm just kind of hanging out, you know, waiting. And <laughs> I eventually, I was talking to um, Ambrosio's dad and his and his uncle, and we were chatting. And uh, you know, Vincent came into the conversation. I think he was furniture shopping or something. They just bought him a bed, and I was like, "Oh, it must be good to get a you know a new bed." And he just kind of like didn't look at me. He was just looking ahead. He, he was glazed. And uh, so finally they, they say, OK, you know, court's open and everybody rushes in and I end up sitting and I didn't necessarily mean to. I was just standing next to him. It was busy in the front row of the peanut gallery with the whole Ambrosio family. And I'm at the end oh, of the bench God. and their whole Jesus. family is there. Why did they think you were there? 
Well, well, I'm going to get to this. This is oh, you know, so okay. everything's good. You know, everything's good. But it's you know, it's a kind of a full courtroom. Like everybody, it's not a big courtroom. So the, all the you know seats is like church pews. They're all full. <laughs> and uh, the dad is in a wheelchair because he's got a bad knee. So the dad goes up to the. He's sitting at the other end for me. I'm on the right side. He's on the left side near the door. And the dad goes up to the attorney. I was like this tall guy, you know, with a ponytail. And he starts talking to the attorney. And I can't hear what he's saying, but I, I can make out like every couple words. But I hear like, um, you know, gang of people coming here to harass us, you know, post on the forum, you know, things like that. And so he's telling what I, I'm assuming is he's telling this lawyer that there's a group of people coming up to create chaos in this courtroom. Which, you know, wasn't the case. We just said we were going. So the, the you know, the lawyer you know, I think can tell like who's, you know, who's the criminal, who's family of criminal and who's just doesn't belong. And the lawyer just looked at me <laughs> and, uh, and he's looking right at me and the dad's still talking. The dad has no idea. It's me, but the lawyer's just looking at me. So then the dad, you know, wheels, wheels away and the lawyer calls over a bailiff or a marshal. They were marshals. And these marshals are all like six foot six, like 400 pounds. They're all like, you know, ex college football players or something. They're just giant people. And he calls over a marshal. And, and he's still looking at me and he's whispering to the marshal and then the marshal looks at me. So I'm like, you know, kind of put my hands up like what, you know what? So then the marshal walks at right at me like he's going to throw me out. And, and I'm thinking like, you know, what am I going to fight? Am I going to be like, you know, I'm allowed to be here? You know, is there anything wrong with me being here? I wasn't filming or anything. I wasn't doing anything I wasn't supposed to do. And uh, the marshal just like walked right past me and stood behind me. And, uh, then the judge came out and everybody stands up and then, you know, things kind of got back to normal and the marshal moved away. So shit, you might know, you know, with these things, it's a lot of people that were in prison that are coming and the judge is like, okay, well, we'll see you in two weeks or, you know, we're going to see you in a month and stuff like that. So there's a lot of movement, a lot of stuff going on and it maybe goes two hours, two and a half hours. And, yeah. you know, once, a, you know, once somebody goes, then that person leaves and then the family, if they had any family there, that the family leaves. So the courtroom's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And finally, it's just the judge and the court reporter and the, the defense attorney and the <laughs> prosecutor and a couple of marshals and the Ambrosio family and then me sitting right next to the Ambrosio family. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody there except the judge. The judge was looking at papers. But everybody else there, all the marshals, the lawyer, the whole Ambrosio family just start looking at me. And they're just staring at me. And nobody says anything. So the, I just put my hands up and I said, like, what, what, you know, what, <laughs> you know, and, and, and luckily, um, the, uh, the judge is like, all right, you know, now we have the matter of Ambrosio. So the, the defense, you know, attorney says, you know, I have my client here and he's a good guy. And, you know, you got the letter from the school and the letter from the doctor. So they sent a bunch of evidence to the judge and the judge is like, yeah, I reviewed it. I reviewed all that stuff. And he said, listen, you know, it's, it's a young guy and it's a mistake. We we're asking for zero time, but there was a, a child pornography charge. He had a, uh, a, a link on his phone to a Dropbox that had child porn. So we got third degree child porn, which was a minimum of one year in prison. So the, the attorney was like, you know, I know you got a sentence to him a year, but we're just hoping for just a year. And uh, the prosecution was like, well, you know, we kind of already have a deal and we talked about it. And, uh, the dad came up and gave a nice speech about how, you know, Vincent is helpful around the house and, you know, is nice to people. And his mom came up and gave a nice little speech so about how Vincent is a good guy and, you know, helps out in the house and things like that. And uh, Vincent never talked the whole time. Um, he, and then so the judge is like, I'm ready to give my sentence. And he said, you know, Vincent, I'm talking to you now. You know, do, do you understand? And Vincent kind of nodded and he's like, you know, I need you to say yes or no. And so Vincent very you know quietly said yes. And the judge says, you know, I understand, you know, you're a good guy and you made a mistake, but these are some very serious charges. So, you know, I'm going to have to sentence you. Um, you know, we're going to give you 30 months for the charges related to the sting. And we're going to give you a year for the child pornography. And they're going to be served um, concurrently. So, you know, you're going to have 30. It's a, well, they give me, I think, an eight year sentence, but it was suspended after 30 months. So you're going to have to serve 30 months. He ended up only serving 14, but they sentenced him to 30 months. And it's funny because, right, you know, I've been to traffic court a lot, but a criminal court I'm not that familiar with. Um, and when Dupee was there, Dupee was in handcuffs the whole time because he was in, you know, he was in jail. But Vincent wasn't. 
So as soon as the judge says, I sentence you, a marshal comes from the left and a marshal comes from the right. And they mm-hmm. grab each grab an arm and then they handcuff him behind his back. And, you know, the courtroom is very echoey. So as they click the handcuffs, it was like really loud and dramatic, like click. And then uh, his mom, you know, sobbed a little bit and then they, you know, carred him out. <laughs> and then I just got up and I ran out. He was sobbing. <laughs> and got say? the fuck out of there. He was Pardon? sobbing. That was great. Did, so, did, uh, the, uh, did the court ever address you? No. I mean, it's a public place. Right, right, I mean, right. I'm just, but nobody quiet. addressed you at all. Not even the no. lawyer. Okay. The lawyer yeah. looked at me, and the marshals looked at me, and the family looked at me. The judge never did anything, but I wasn't being disruptive. I didn't. I wasn't recording it. So you yeah, know, yeah, you did nothing. I'm allowed wrong, to be no. there. I'm allowed to be there. They can't. You know, it's it's even out of line for them to ask you why you're there. So they, they didn't ask me why either. I mean, they looked yeah. at me and they knew, so they had yeah. an eye on me. But they, you know, the, the lawyer probably knew. Like, we can't do anything unless he. You know, tries to do something, and I wasn't going to try to do anything. I was just there to watch it. Did did they present like uh, any medical records, documents, uh, anything? They, like that? Well, it had all been. See, this was just a sentencing, so they already had a plea bargain. Yeah. Um, but they had sent everything to the judge already, so the judge had mentioned he saw, um, you know, the doctor's notes and the medical notes and notes right. from like teachers and things like that. So they had really built him up to be like a real basket case when that's not the fact. Cause we talked to somebody he went to high school with and they were like, you know, he dressed weird and stuff, but like he wasn't picked on. Like he was kind of like people accepted him, you know? So he wasn't like bullied in school as much as, you know, he kind of makes it out to be. Yeah. Um, did, was there a summing up by the judge that incorporated his kind of medical evidence? No, I mean, no, because everything was like, you know, you saw the report, like you saw what the doctor had you know, said. So they never really, summed it all up which would have been you know a lot nicer um but it was they i think they already had an agreement like we're pleading guilty to these charges and i think they already kind of knew a sentencing guideline too so the prosecution really didn't have to do anything you know yeah bipolar i mean they had already they had already done everything already so it was really the the lawyer the defense lawyer kind of throwing them at the mercy of the judge like maybe give us a little bit less than what they said but the judge went with what the agreement was Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, and did you get what kind of impression did you get from looking at Vincent? Like, what was his emotions like? He, he, I, you know, I don't know for sure, but you see him in a sting, and he's kind of animated and and kind of you know seems like he can hold the conversation. He showed no emotion and and really looked like he was sedated. Wow. I mean, Even through his allocution, I mean, that is, that might be his medication. The whole, well, I think you know. You, I know. I would be nervous if I was in his shoes too, and I, I would be surprised if they gave him a, a sedative. So I mean, he showed no emotion. Like you know, I went to Sokol's, and Sokol was there, and Sokol was nervous. Like he was pacing, he was tapping his foot a lot, and that's how I would be if I was in their shoes. I'd be you know tapping my foot, I'd be pacing, I'd be kind of anti, you know, man, manic. And uh, Vincent was the op- Vincent was like, you know, just zoning out, like didn't talk to anybody that whole two hour break. Never talked in court besides that, you know, yes. His, pro- his father probably hit him with a dart gun before he left. Yeah. So he must but, have yeah, um, hit him with a tranquilizer. Here. Well, this might be a good time just to show a little bit of footage from the uh, from the actual segment because he does show a lot of emotion there. Um, mm-hmm. So if we just show a bit of that now, um, and then people who haven't seen... Um, who haven't seen the segment, which I'm pretty sure they have, um, will be able to check it out. Um, you just bear with me, because uh, the footage is great, isn't it? Because I, I, what I like about it is Chris kind of, um, you know, he's kind of um, feels sympathetic towards him at the end. It's one of the most interesting elements. So I'm just going to play a little bit now. I have nothing to live for anyway. Well, what do you mean you? <laughs> I like the way he takes a seat on the stool like he's mounting a horse. I failed high school. Stays with I, his I have no motivation of motif. Yeah. None of the pills about work. What do you do for a living? I don't have a job. I don't have a job. I'm a fuck up. Well, he got that right. I mean, guys, I mean, it, it's... What's interesting is he cries as soon as Chris Hansen comes out, doesn't he? You know, it's like 20 seconds ago. It's a little bit like the lawn scenario, isn't it? So you kind of have... 
I do believe that his life was in a mess, but obviously it doesn't justify his actions at all, which is clear. He seemed fine before he exactly. came out. Exactly, that's the whole point, and you know that's mm-hmm. you can see straight through it. I do believe that this guy's got genuine issues. Is it? Um, was you able to gauge Joey from the court case? that there was a genuine sort of... Was there anything that gave you any insight into his character and to any struggles that he was going through at all? Not a whole lot because it was all sealed. Now, they did mention... Um, and, and Vincent mentions it in the interrogation, too. But he mentions that um, he didn't finish high school. Um, and I think it was, like, March or April of his senior year. Um, he, he was very depressed. And wouldn't get out of bed. And uh, so they, they sent him to a, a counselor. And the counselor recommended he go to inpatient for a while. So I, I think he finished. You know, he didn't finish high school. He may have gone back and took a test and got his diploma. But like his last two months, he was in an inpatient program for depression. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, at any point, did either of you two, when you first saw this footage... Did it invoke any sympathy in either of you, Joey, first of all? Well, the footage came out much later. The footage didn't come out until May, ah. like, like a little over a year ago. Interesting. You know, it came out on Hanson's website, I think, in, in late April or of early course. May of 2019. Right, yeah. So we hadn't seen it except for a tiny clip. Um, but the interrogation came out a few years ago. So this thing happened in October of 20. Uh, 15 and it got aired the show got aired in 2016 2017 like fall 2016 spring 2017 they didn't air ambrosio even though chris did an interview in january saying oh yeah we're gonna air him we're gonna air him we're gonna show his face we did it very tastefully but then chris never aired him and never talked about it so we used to hound him all the time and say you know chris what the fuck you gotta you know air him you said you'd air him you know give us a thing but i think they thought he was too pathetic in that interview but if you read the chat like we also got the chat too um, a few years before, and the chat is really, really bad. Well, you can tell so that pre- just from the segment, can't you? Because of the because uh, he admits to the child porn. That's a huge element of this case. There's, you, mm. you know, if you want to sort of classify these people, you have the opportunist. You have people like Dustin and like him. I think they're cut from the same mold with regard to the depravity of the perversions. Right, and when we got the interrogation, you know, on DVD, nobody had seen it. And we watched it, and you know you you've seen I know Andy you've seen the uh, interrogation. I mean it's it's pretty brutal. I mean it's it's pretty pathetic, and, and you kind of feel sorry for him in the interrogation. And I was like, ah oh, man, I don't think we can show this. I mean this is just you know just so pathetic. But everybody else was like, no, I mean you know he's a criminal. You you, you know you have to. Yeah. You know uh, you you, you you can't you can't have this. Joey breaking up? Yeah, Joey, you're uh, cutting out a little bit there, so I couldn't Every, hear you. Sorry. Yeah, it's just the the interrogation is oh, is go. pretty pathetic too. Yeah. You know, it's it's sad. It's kind of sad, and the sting footage is sad. But if you read the chat log, I mean, it's a bad chat log. It's it's pretty bad. There's no like, you know, hey, you know, let's go on a date with a girl kind of thing real quick. It you know, it's sex and sex and why aren't you masturbating for me over and over? And she's only twelve. She's not fifteen. She's twelve. And she says, oh, I don't want that's, to, when he keeps that's pressuring huge. her. And, no, it that's is. Huge. The age thing is huge. I mentioned this a well, lot. The, the, not only that, but the chat log emphasized that by her telling him she was in seventh grade, too. Mm-hmm. So that, that kind of adds to it, too. Just think, like, one year before, she was an elementary school student. Yeah. yeah. Pupil. Yeah. Th- this you is know? a guy. It's an interesting sort of... Um, concoction because you've got the pathetic character he's very young um he's pitiable he's on all this medication he clearly has suffered from depression he's got image issues he's, he's obese he, he he's got low self-esteem he dresses a bit odd nothing, nothing wrong with that and then it, you could almost extend a bit of sympathy to him but like you said joey you're talking a really depraved chat log one of the worst where there's no it's a bad yeah you know, it's a bad chat log, and there's no question that he knew she was underage, and he wanted, you know, a 12 year old this, girl. Yeah, you and, know, and, this, you know, and, but he's sorry. he's manipulative too. I think like he knows he gets out of trouble by crying. Chris took it really easy on him when he's exactly crying. Joey, exactly. And you know, and he's he says, "Oh, I, people make fun of me because of how I dress." 
well, then don't wear a cowboy hat. Exactly. You know, if you, if you don't want to get made fun of, take the hat off. Yeah, he's self-sabotaging you know? a lot. I think that he does have underlying problems, but he doesn't help himself. It's like, oh, I'm fat. I can't do it because I'm fat. He's, he's self-pitying, isn't he? Mm-hmm. It and, would help you know, a lot how, if he just untucked his shirt. That wouldn't be that bad, you know. You know, and, and how many like people that. are depressed? Like half the people I know are are probably clinically depressed, and probably ninety percent of the people I know are on medication for some kind of you know behavior, mental issue. Yeah, so this whole thing's an act. This for him to bring it up, like, oh, I'm, I have depression, and I you know take this medication. Well, so do, so does yeah. a lot of the population. Yeah, yeah. This That's is cool. this is a, this is this is all bullshit. Uh, we, you know, him coming in is who he is, and um, and and that court catatonic uh, thousand mile stare in court that's the same act. I mean, this guy, you know, this guy was had had child pornography. I mean, he admitted to that too. And the other thing that bothered me is uh, the knife. You know, um, it, that was a that was a uh, that was a foldable buck knife. That wasn't uh, some small little pocket knife. Yeah, just a big knife hat like that. And, now, and do you again, think- most people carry knives i mean i'm not saying that but it's just weird that he carries a knife yeah do you think they would have found i don't know shin did you see his interrogation yeah no i saw um your raw footage uh that you uh that you okay the Mm -hmm. the interrogation it was kind of at the end and she's like is there anything else you want us to know they had a very nice friendly um, woman interrogator right it was very very nice and friendly and he opened up and then he, she says at the end, like, is there anything else we should know about? And she had his, she had his phone, and she had the password for his phone. Um, and he says, well, I have a link in my notes to uh, uh, like a Dropbox, and that link is to a site with child porn. Right, right, right. And I don't know right. if they would have found it. Like, he didn't have the images in his photos. He had a link in his notes, and I don't know if they would, you know, check all the links in his notes. Yeah, I mean, he 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 basically uh, just laid down in terms of any uh, culpable facts. Yeah, these are there, these are there, but, but he was just, you know, just playing the sympathy card for everything else. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's I'm, in survival mode at that point, it. isn't he? That's you know, it. he'll he'll try anything to wriggle out of it, and it's like I hate it when there's oh, I knew this was going to happen. He says that at the beginning. Well, you didn't know this was going to happen, did you? Because you wouldn't have fucking turned up. Yeah, uh, if you knew it was going to happen, you wouldn't have gone. Exactly. I know what I'll do. I'll go to that house, get busted, and be labelled a sex offender. That sounds like a good move. Exactly. Um, you know, it's it's. Um, Joey, was there any indication? I think I know what the answer is with regard to the severity of the child images that were, that he was in possession of. Were they classified like A, B, C? What did we have? Well, yeah, it was third here, degree, anything? and third degree is like one to twenty images or something. I could be wrong, but it's the lowest. There's three degrees. Right. And third degree is the least amount of photos. Now, we had a link to a Dropbox, and I would imagine the link probably just counted as like one photo, but I'm sure the Dropbox had more than one photo. Um, but what the, what it is, I mean, I have no idea what the images were, but it was considered, um, you know, child porn. But I, I don't. I have no idea what they, you know, what they were. Oh, of course, like yeah. I mean, it's probably better that we don't know, but it should, it'd just be interesting to know the severity of it because I believe that... If I remember correctly, McFetridges were pretty bad. Um, I think there were there was the higher classification from what I remember. He had at least a lot of images. I think he had many, many, didn't he? Um, I've t- I've talked to somebody that knows this stuff, and they basically say it's got to be blatant child porn. Like if you have a you know a seventeen year old girl in spring break lifting her shirt up, like you know they're not gonna you know because you, you can argue well she maybe she's eighteen. So with that, it's not. They're not going to really go after you for that. Oh, it's really, it's got to be that. like, it's got to be like obviously, you know, child porn. Yeah, um, because from the chat log, it certainly would be um, evident that he would, you know, his levels of of perversion is quite strong. So it's, it's potential that he'd have some pretty graphic stuff on there, and he's young as well. And we can remember about people his age. No, people's skills online are pretty uh, are pretty good. So. You know, the propensity for him to get more depraved as time goes on um, is always there. That's what I find interesting about this mm-hmm. case. Uh, it's the age thing for me. I mean, I did a video about it because, um, you know, I got the, the footage was available. I thought, you know, why not? And I 
believe that there's a better chance for somebody like him to be rehabilitated because he's so young. When you're so young, you, you, you haven't got a fully developed judgment system. And I'm not trying to, like, you know... Take no, yeah, yeah I hear you. Yeah. You know, it's not trying to, like, demean his crimes because it's terrible and he has to face the consequences, but... He seems to be quite self-aware, so there was there's always a chance with someone like him that he can be rehabilitated. Because we we were talking mm-hmm. about that as well, weren't we, Shin? Yeah, you know, it's funny you say uh, self-aware. That's one of the things that uh, you know I think that it's redeeming about him. When I talk about uh, the other predators who were uh, who were basically chastising themselves, they always say how stupid they were, or I'm not interested in 13 year old girls. He went right to the morality issue. You know, he he fessed right up to that. Uh, it's wrong. You know, that it's rare that a lot of these predators go right to that. So he is the self-awareness is there for him. Um, but his the age thing, you know, that you're right. I, I always give people, you know, there's a chance for redemption there. You, you're talking about somebody who's just a few years out of becoming uh, from being a child in, himself or herself. So, you know, maybe there's some, some some rope you can give. But the guys we've seen, the people we've seen, the Richard Brials, he he was 19 too. Uh this guy, they're special cases. This isn't this isn't like in some most states who have a grandfather clause where two minors uh, were together and then one turned majority age, uh you know, as long as there's a, a particular I think it's two or three year age limit, that that relationship right. is sanctioned. You know, it's not like that, you know, uh, and plus the going after 12 year old. Yeah. And I think Brielle did, too, which is interesting. Yeah, Brielle was 12, too. And his chat was gross, too. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, normally for a 19 year old who makes a mistake or whatever, confuses, whatever, you know, yeah, maybe you can cut him some slack, but not these 19 year olds. Right. That's interesting. So what what do you think? Because my opinion, Shin, right, is for what it's worth, I think more. I think this should be dealt with harshly because any any offence like this should be dealt with harshly. But I think that consideration should be given to someone's age as opposed to someone who might be 30. Do, do you agree with that? Or 40? You know, someone who's older and mature and should know better. I mean, he should yeah, know better. No, I, I, I agree with you. And he was sentenced to a, um, a prison that focuses on people with mental health issues. And they're segregated by age in this prison. So he would have been around people, you know, his own age and people with, you know, other kind of issues. Yeah. So I think the prison he went to was kind of like a, you know, he he probably got a lot of therapy there. Joe, did you have uh, outside community? Did you like, uh, wasn't the father who was an ex-cop somehow actively involved in this case with the community? (laughs) Do we know anything about that? Here we go. (laughs) Are we allowed to talk about that? I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. If no, no. Was... I, I think... so, but it was out there. That's why I was asking. If, you know. Yeah. What, what, what had happened was, you know, after, you know, the case, the father realized who I was, you know, because he knew people were kind of up there. So he uh, started, started hitting me up on fake accounts on, on Facebook. And, and uh, you know, but he, the father is, is weird and the father I say, like, you know, do this. What are you going to do? You know, I'm going to come and get you. And then he would be like, hey, you know, tell me more about going to that Ambrosio case. And I'm like, Dennis, you know, I know it's you. It's the same account you were talking to me on. He's like, who's Dennis? And I'm like, come on. So and he kept bugging me on this with these fake names. And he was also hitting up uh, perverted uh, Tetrid Core's Facebook page. And I'm asking Joey, him, I'm Joey, like, what do you, you, you keep, you're cutting out? You keep man. breaking up, dude. Oh. I think there might be. Sorry. Is that, is that any better? Is that any better? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. sorry. Sorry. Um, so he kept hitting me up under fake accounts, and he was hitting up uh, Tetra Core's Facebook page and shit posting there. And, you know, I, I was telling him, like, Dennis, what do, you, what do you want from me? Like, you know, why are you bugging me? And he finally said, well, I want to meet you. And so I thought about it, and he was an ex-cop, and he's a retired cop. But, I, you know, I have relatives that are ex-cops, and I know, you know, they do anything for each other. And I can just imagine going to meet him in some public place and getting tackled by some cop. And then they're pulling out a bag of heroin and saying, hey, how'd this get in your pocket? You know, yeah. and so I'm like, I'm not I'm not going to meet you, but I'll, I'd be happy to talk to you. And he's like, well, I want to you know, be there, you know, to see you so I can read, you know, read you. And I'm like, yeah, it's not going to happen. I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not going to meet you anywhere, but I'd be happy to talk about you. He never told me to, um, 
you know, stop talking about him or take any footage down. He just kept saying he wanted to meet me. He could, so have, I was he like, could have enticed you like with Vincent's baby pictures or something. <laughs> Dude, if he said, listen, hey, listen, you know, I understand, you know, you have a right to post this stuff, but it's causing us some problems. I'd really appreciate it if, you know, you took the interrogation down. It wasn't even on my channel, um, you know, or whatever. And I probably would have been like, you know what? Sure. I, I'll, no problem. But he never asked. He, he never even asked. And then what happened was the interrogation. Um, I got the interrogation and uh, gave it to the captain channel and they they uploaded the interrogation. And then when I got the interrogation, the police department only had my phone number. Like I had sent an email under like a Joey Jeremiah email account saying, Hey, I want this, you know, FOI, this stuff. Right. And, uh, and, you know, just message me when you have it. And, you know, a couple of weeks went by and I didn't get a message. So I called with my real number and I said, Hey, do you have the uh, interrogation stuff for Joey for Ambrosio? And they said, yeah, we have it. You can come up and get it. So I drove up there and, and paid him 50 cents for the DVD and, uh, and went back. And then a couple of weeks later, Dennis was under the forum on a different name, um, doxing me, you know, name, address, um, you know, link to a LinkedIn account and saying, you know, this is the guy that posted it. Everybody should like go visit him and thank him, you know, for all this great work. And, uh, and was just spamming it everywhere. Wait a minute. So only, how do you get your information? But through the FOI, the only way he could have got it. And this, the police, I don't know why the police would do this. <clears throat> Um, but the only way they knew it was me would have been for my phone number. And the only way they had my phone number would have been in their caller ID when I called up and asked for it. So he right. must have went down to the police station and said, Hey, listen, I'm used to be a cop. Can you tell me who, you know, did this? So they looked in their, you know, caller ID and was like, here's the phone number. And that's how we got the info. That's right. the only way he could have got the info. And, uh, and, and, um, so finally I had to have a lawyer write a cease and desist letter because what he was doing was second degree harassment to post right. somebody's info and say, you know, go visit this guy and, and thank him and stuff like that and spam it after being told no, like that's second degree harassment is a felony. And, you know, so I had a cease and desist letter and, uh, and that is where was he stopped posting? after that. Where was he posting? Oh, on, a, on a temple of TCAP forum. As uh, of all places, like those are the people. <laughs> and it's, and the, the remnants are still there. Like we X'd out all the personal info. But he's uh, he's there um, from a couple of years ago. I'll send you the I'll send you the link, and uh, it's a it's a long, just a long link, and everybody's attacking him, and you know he's saying, well, it's you know how is this not right? Like he's posting my son's info that he got from the police, so I got his info from the police, and I can post his info. Yeah, but, but look at his audience though. What an idiot! You know he should he should have posted it on a, on a Nambla website. Right. And, and I imagine he probably went to a lawyer and was like. You know, let's go get this guy for harassment. And the lawyer probably said, "Listen, what he posted is public information, or what he right. got was public information." And, and what he did legal. is free speech. And what you're doing, you know, after being told to stop, is illegal. So right. not only are we not going to go get him, like you better, you know, stop what you're doing too. Did he ever call you using that number? Uh, not that I know of. I mean, I could have got a hang okay. call or something, but he never called me on it. So everything was through uh, the for, uh, yeah. Facebook. So all that harassment was yeah either through uh, the forum or through uh, or through Facebook Messenger. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. But the other thing, just to show you know the the dad's thinking is Vincent got caught on a Saturday. It was like a Saturday afternoon when he got arrested, and he had told his parents he was going down to Delaware for a car race, and he'd be back. Um, I think either Sunday night or Monday morning. And uh, so he gets and he was going to go down to that car race in Delaware the next day, but he gets arrested. And in the interrogation, he's like, are you going to call my parents? And they're like, well, no, you're an adult. We're not going to call out your parents. <laughs> so uh, so he doesn't call his parents. So he doesn't come home Sunday night or Monday. And now it's Tuesday and he's not home. So uh, uh, the parents are calling him and probably don't know where his phone is, is in evidence. So they, they must have like checked the phone records. Yeah, and they see the last number he was texting was the decoy's number. Tetra score, yeah, yeah. Right. So okay. they called the decoy, and the decoy's phone was like the decoy phone. It wasn't, you know, her personal phone. This is the phone that only for the decoy calls. So why would the phone be ringing? So she's like, "Why is the phone ringing?" So she picks it up with a decoy voice, and he's just like, "Who is this? Who is this?" And I have that call. It's up on my channel. That's the phone call I heard. That's right. Yeah. 
And and she's like, well, who are you? And he's, you know, you called me. And he's like, well, who's this? Who is this? And then he finally says, well, you know, is this Jenna? Or she goes, this is Jenna. You know, the, the decoy's name. This is Jenna. And he goes, you're computer generated. And she's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and and he's like, she's like, who are you? And he goes, I'm the police. Which he's not right. allowed to do because he's not an right. active police and he's not involved in this. This guy's committed crimes everywhere, man. Now, so, here's the thing. Let's say your kid is missing and you, you get the last number he talked to. I would call them up and I would say, listen, I don't know who you are, but my son is Vincent. Do you have any idea where he is? I haven't seen him in two days. That's what a, a parent would do, right? That's, that's he never asked right. where his son was. He never asked where the son was. And, right. uh, and, and he, that was it. He, he just wanted to say he was the police and, and get her name. And that was that was the whole phone call. And I don't know how he finally found out Vincent was in jail up in Connecticut. Maybe Vincent finally called him or I don't know. I don't know how he found out. But he well, what, what, did out. He, what do you think he saw to accomplish with that? <sighs> I don't know. Yeah. Like you fucked with the wrong person. You know, we're going to come get you. You know, something like so, that is the only thing I can think of. Because you would think, where, you know, where's my kid? I'm, my kid's gone. I can't find him. He called you. Where is he? He never asked where where he was. Oh, that was at a time before he knew his kid was arrested. Yeah, well, yeah, th- this was that's like an two, indication. Three days after this thing. That's an indication of guilt, isn't it? Because if he was really sort of caring for his son and thinking, "Oh my God," you know, not that it'd be difficult in that situation, but if he's kind of seems like he's projecting all that guilt on you, it's like, "Right, I'm going to get you. How dare you dispose my, uh, expose my son for being a dirty child molester?" You know. Well, it, it also could imply he knew what his son was doing. And potentially, if, he's, if, he, I, I, if he's not, a, why? Well, it seems unlikely, though. Well, yeah, I, I'm just saying, I, I, yeah. by implication, you know, if he's not worried about his whereabouts of his son, he knows that his son's in custody or something. Or uh, there was an actual decoy. You know, again, this is just speculation, but it, it, you're right, Joey. Why wouldn't he be concerned about the whereabouts of my kid? Yeah, it's really weird. You it's, know, it's really weird. Yeah, but eventually they, they found out he was there and he, and he got bailed out. Well, yeah, <laughs> he calls them. <laughs> Uh, so is he will he be on the RSO for potentially ever or is the chance of it being quashed at some point what's the 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 guys in Connecticut um, received 8 to 10 year suspended sentences Vincent got an 8 year suspended sentence um, then followed by 10 years of um, probation and I don't know if that 10 year starts after the 8 or if it starts like the day he got out of prison I'm not really sure but he'll have extended probation and then they're sex offenders for life. And I guess you can challenge that um, and you can yeah, get off. But he, yeah, he that's got, a tricky thing. Right. But, so, but he, all the Connecticut guys, except for Manzi and Tiriolo, got the, the eight to 10 year suspended sentence, followed by 10 years of probation, followed by lifetime or, you know, and lifetime sex offender. And these are all state court, not federal court crimes. It's all, I mean, all state. Yeah. Yeah. But did, Even though did, some of the guys uh, were from New York, like Ambrosio was from New York, yeah. it, was still, it was all state. It was all done by the So state. they didn't bring federal charges against him. And, and also, what's his name? Sokol came from Boston, right? Yeah, Sokol came from uh, Brookline. Brookline, right. And uh, and uh, two of the guys, um, Gentile came from New York, and uh, and what's his, and, and Cologne came from New York, and Ambrosio came from New York. So they had three guys from New York and one guy from Mass. But it was all done in Connecticut. They didn't have any federal tra- charges. Oh wow! Like all the Kentucky guys did. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they have a special thing with New York and Connecticut, and Massachusetts. I'm not sure, but uh, there was no. Maybe they were going to hit them with enough years that the you know feds were satisfied. Yeah, and everybody took the plea. Nobody, nobody fought it, which was surprising. Wow. Oh, I'd be surprised if anybody went to went to trial with this. Uh, right. Let's. I'm going to play a little bit more from the um, from the interrogation with Chris. <laughs> Look, I can understand how tough that is on you. But why does that make it okay? I wasn't going to do anything. But that's not what you said. said I know. I want to be a cop. I wasn't going to do anything. I just want to be a cop. Damn it, I can't hear it. He just said he wanted to be a cop, and Chris's face pretty much says it all, that I've just paused it on the... um... Oh, this one said I'm too fat to be a cop, though, right? Um, Well, he's just about to get to that bit now where... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, but Chris, yeah, he, he says, I'm too fat. In fact, let's just play the next <laughs> bit. Well, then why don't you go join the police academy or... I'm fat. I can't do anything. I'm fat. I can't do anything. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that's a direct indication of exactly how he's feeling because common sense would say to anybody with half a brain, lose weight. Um, well, he did. He, I'm sorry. He, 
I didn't want to jump ahead. I, I think he did say he lost weight too recently. Well, actually, if you look at the the photo on my original thumbnail, because I fucked up the stream as usual, it kind of disappeared. He was a lot um, bigger, it would seem, from some of his earlier photos. Did you uh, see that, Joey? Um, was he? Yeah, I mean, it looked like he was bigger in some of the, the photos from the chat, but that's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. But uh, he looked like he was bigger in the photos than he was when he showed up at the house. He did. And he mentions like he lost. I think he says he lost 20 40 pounds. pounds. 40 pounds. Yeah. 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 That's what I thought. I remember him saying. But, you know, if you want to be a cop, you know, how many, you know, you know, Chief Wiggums, like there's fat cops. <laughs> yeah, know? but you got to get through the academy, though. Yeah, but, you know, you can try multiple times. I mean, you know. So this guy looks. He'll try. Um, the physical, you know, the obstacle courses and everything else. I think he'd be a, it'd be a struggle. Yeah, you know. The physical requirements. <clears throat> but but it is an indication of his kind of um, feeling, you know, that this kind of melancholy kind of. Well, yeah. Well, I for, first of all, Joey, I don't think that his physical incapabilities would keep him out from being a cop alone. <laughs> anyway, I think this guy would be screened out psychologically immediately. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, put it this way: he's certainly going to get screened out now, isn't he? So uh, he's going to have to maybe do his undertaking career because that's kind of what it looked like when he went in there. But um, I mean, it, it's it, 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 it's very. I can't get at that age. It's like I said: the the age thing is 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 of massive importance. I know for you, Shin, because of the age mm -hmm. of the person he was going after. You, you know, you've yeah. got strong feelings about it, but you also believe there is a chance of people like him turning it around. I believe that someone like him is always going to have that attraction. I think it's not, not like him, not like him, people his age. Uh, you what, know, if I haven't mean? seen, they, they haven't been, no, nobody on the show, I think there's only been a handful of 19 year olds fit in that category, though. I mean, they're except, again, we're talking about mitigation here, you know, something to, to give them a little, um, a little slack on, you know, but when you, when you have all these other things add up, the age of the decoy, the child porn on top of that. And, you know, Brill had his own issues too. These guys were predators, you know, they weren't just, you know, uh, considered youthful indiscretion or whatever hell you want to call it. You know, there's a little difference, but I would say that 19 year olds are uh, you know, 18, 19 in that age, you, you got to kind of look into it and see if they, they're like these guys. And these guys uh, don't fit in that exception. There's nothing that can mitigate what they did. No, but um, the treatment that these guys can undergo to make them sort of, not, well, to, to, so that they don't pose a danger is very intense and difficult. Um well, like you said, I mean, somebody who's in their thirties and forties and fifties, yeah, there's, there's, there has to be a difference between somebody who's eighteen or nineteen. I mean, it, at the very least, you can say that that's the formation of it. Maybe it can be stopped, but you know, again, we went through these um, pedophile um, documentaries before, and and we know how it starts at an early age, um, and. You know, maybe this is again just just uh, you know for a nineteen year old, it's just uh, you know technically going with a seventeen year old is is uh, would be illegal for him. But socially, it's a little different. Those kinds of cases are different. This guy is was uh, was looking for somebody who was uh, prepubescent almost. Yeah, he was so, it, the, the essence of a predator. He was going after someone ridiculously young. Yeah who, yeah. you know, doesn't have the awareness and the ability to defend themselves. That's why the term predator is so apt. Uh, at this moment in his life that we're looking at him now, he is somebody who needs to be locked away at all costs. My sort of point is with, you know, some strict jail time, some harsh conditions, not torture, but, you know, um, and the willing, it's all about the will to get better and the will to want to be a better person. And that's why Lawn's consistently failing rape class because he's just no, he doesn't see that there's anything wrong. He's not interested, and it's about, you know, we all go through moments of self improvement in life where we want to get fitter or we want to read more or whatever. But these guys, 
you know, you've got a serious problem. It's like we've discussed before. If you're born with this attraction, as soon as you start to develop sexual feelings and you're attracted to children, that's not your fault. It's genetic. But it's what you choose to do about it. I can mm-hmm. imagine that if if you are, you know, I, I can imagine it being horrendous. If you're growing up and you have attraction to really young kids, it must invoke all kinds of really bizarre emotions that you don't quite understand. But what I don't understand is why would you, you would choose to act upon it with such devotion and risk everything i mean that's why i think there's a chance at this age you don't your brain's still mush you know um, and you could also assume you're not you don't have as many victims as you might have when you're 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 right you know you could you could have that assumption that you know this guy um has a fraction, if any, uh, compared to older guys who are doing this. Um, so there's no track record here. I mean, maybe there's no track record. But there's another know, thing that's that's mm-hmm. I think very interesting in, in Ambrosio's situation is, and I think uh, it was either Wes or or Big Salmon brought this up. I think it was Wes um, said like why or, you know why did it eventually air? Because Chris originally said it was going to air, and they put him in the original trailer, so everybody thinks it's going to air. Then it doesn't air, and maybe a year later, Chris is on his Facebook Live Crime Watch Daily thing, and somebody asked him about Ambrosio, and he said, you know, yes, this guy, you know, did come for a twelve-year-old. Yes, he hit up another decoy. Yes, um, you know, he's a danger to society, but you know, he's been punished. And how much public shame do you really need? Was Chris's answer? You can say that about anybody, right? I mean, I thought he's—I thought he referred to his age as being a reason. Yeah, he might have done that to him. He said, like, you know, that he was young or whatever. Um, and, uh, and and Chris flat out said, you know, how much public shame does somebody need? I hope he gets the help that he needs. And then, so Chris flat out says, we're not airing him because we don't want to publicly shame him. But then a year and a half later, when Chris's website came up, that was the big fanfare was, here's the Ambrosio footage, you know, and teasing the Ambrosio footage. We're getting into the realms of Chris's moralities or lack of because it would seem that when he was in a position where he needed to make money, boost his uh, popularity, he'd just throw anything out there. Whereas originally, right. so it's okay threat. now. So yeah, now it's exactly. Yeah. exactly. Joey, was it a legal threat, you think? Um, it might have been a legal threat, but any other predator could do a legal threat too. I mean, why would Ambrosio be different than any other guy? They all kind of have the same charge. So, yeah. it's, you know, why can't everybody say if you, sh- you know, put this well, on the, the air? The also. other thing is Chris didn't exactly like, uh, you know, put the hammer down on this guy. He was a, like a therapist in this one. Right. And I, I think that's a lot of it is sympathetic. And a lot of the things with the, the show that makes the show good is that you're yeah. humiliating these guys. And these guys are monsters and they're really bad and they're lying and they're acting stupid. And you can laugh at them and you can hate on them. But then you see Vincent and it's not funny. And, you know, it's just kind of sad. Like you watch just if you just watch the sting footage, it's kind of a sad situation. So it doesn't make for good TV. TV. That's basically it. Because you feel sympathetic to the bad guy, kind of. Yeah. But at the same time, if there was any kind of legal threat, we're not talking about NBC, Westinghouse, whoever owns them now. We're talking about small website what is it crime watch daily crime watch daily yeah a small so it's not like it, you know it's not like they could absorb some major uh, lawsuit like those uh, like those uh, other companies scala eben has just made a very good point in the chat and said that chris was worried about him blowing his another predator blowing his brains out like um, you know comrade uh, whatever he was called the da strict uh, the, the you know the assistant da um i think that may be a case but at the end of the of this footage, and we might as well skip to it. Chris genuinely was like um, concerned. Do you know what I mean? Let's just play yeah, a but, little bit now. Oh, Let's yeah. just play. I, you will get help. Yes, I don't want to be like okay. this anymore with this, any of this. Okay, so can we make this a turning point for you? Yes. As dark as this looks right now. <laughs> okay. But the, the, you know, there's no way to go but up from here. I go easy. <coughs> so you will get help. All right. I know some people disagree with me, but I genuinely believe Chris at that point felt sorry for him and wanted him to get better. You know, because he said, I've got two sons. He was relating it to his own sort of life and going, God, he's, this guy's a kid. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, exactly. No, yeah, you know, 
I don't. I think that if this thing ended up like like a Michael Patterson arrest where he went screaming through the house and made for great TV, it would have been on. So, I think. Yeah. I think. I yeah, think it probably. came down to an entertainment decision or, or something like that. Or at least that didn't wait well with it. If there was a legal, it could have been a combination of things. But this was definitely an aberration for me from what he normally does with predators. I don't know. So I, I don't know. It'd be interesting. Has anybody actually, did anybody put it to Chris? Why? Did anybody put it to him directly? Why it wasn't? Did he give an explanation? Why, why he didn't show it? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what he said. He 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 said, you know, how much public shame does somebody need? Right. Okay. His, it was his words, and I have I have a video of him saying that. Yeah. Right. So he had said that. Um, that that and, doesn't make sense. You know. Why doesn't uh, it make sense? Because he didn't care about that with any other predators. But th but this guy's from his eyes is different. This guy's a lot younger. How many nineteen year olds have there been? Well, that he didn't say that. Did he say that? I I don't know. He did. Um, um, I, I think what he mentioned, you know, he mentioned all the, you know, the crimes that he did, but he said, you know, um, he had some like mental health issues going on and he might've said he was, I don't remember if he said mentioned his age or not. He might have, um, but you know, <sighs> and, and it was just, man. you know, how much public shame, it, it, you know, does he need is what he said. Right. That's interesting. I, 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 I mean, obviously it went out of the window when Chris got right apparently, desperate for whatever it was you know attention a bit more publicity whatever all of it went out of the window but he's released it he released it on the internet but it wasn't broadcast like it would have been on crime watch daily i mean those videos joey have had millions of views doesn't like some of them had like um 10 over 10 million views one of the hansen versus predator oh they they have more than that and then they re-uploaded them like a couple of years later and they got another 10 plus million views wow so, you know, why Chris put it on a website and didn't throw it on his YouTube channel is just silly because he would have, you know, got millions and millions of views on it. I mean, I have the footage up on my channel now because um, somebody, you know, because Vincent didn't hide it very well and somebody, you know, stole it off his site. Um, it, it, and it, it has like maybe a million and a half views on it on my on my channel. Wow. So uh, people want to see it. And if it was on Crime Watch Daily, it would have 10, you know, 10, 20 times that many views. It's interesting. It is interesting, even though I understand why it's not in the same vein as catching some of the other predators. It's very interesting for a number of reasons. Um, I, What do you think about, let's just say, is able to make progress with regard to rehabilitation or something like that? Because I know some people are skeptical and I understand it because, in, in you know, they, they are monsters in effect. They are predators. How would you feel if the, if if rehabilitation was successful and started to make progress, but yet they were still all over YouTube and they couldn't ever break away with it? Do you think that's a justifiable consequence of your actions, even though he was so young? Um, that it being all over over YouTube. Yeah. Um, you know, if if nobody's ever, you know, I've gotten takedown notices. I got one recently from um, Energy Singh. Right. And I don't put their I don't put their names on it, so I might have their first name, but I don't have their last name. And for Vincent, I just have Undertaker Predator. So if you put his name in, my video is not going to come up. Yeah, and I have that with all the guys to give them a little bit of privacy. Um, but if somebody like actually reached out to me and said, and the only one that did this was Dark Hero, um, and said, "Listen, do you mind taking it down?" I would take it down. Dark mm -hmm. Hero was like, you know, who's that? Joey, do you mind I'm not taking it down? Who that is, dude? Dark Hero was the guy on the first episode and they blurred his face because he was schizophrenic and he's the guy ah. that yells at chris and says i think your story's a piece of shit you know right and, and you did uh, an interview uh, a subsequent interview with him right so i you know i talked to him and you know he was he was willing to talk and he was all excited to talk um but but he said listen you know nobody knew about it because they didn't mention my name and they didn't show my face and you know i put up we got a hold of his chat log and his photos from like a hidden page on perverted justice. So you can kind of dig around in the archives of perverted justice. And we found his chat log and we found his um, face, but we didn't know his name. His chat log was pretty vile too. He w he wanted to be called sir. All the time. He could always call him like, sir. Yes, sir. And stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah. So you can't it, 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 without it me telling good. you you can. And, and uh, but, but he reached out and said, listen, do you mind taking that down? Because like, you know, nobody knew who it was back then. And I'd like to keep it that way. And I was like, yeah, well, yeah sure. I'll take it down. So, uh, so we took it down, and then he gave his, you know, interview about nine eleven and the New York Knicks and all that kind of good stuff. Yeah, he was pretty off the rails in that, wasn't he? <laughs>
That's a that's another that's a reason to take it down. Well, there. the, the uh, deep state stopped because um, the Islanders had won four Stanley Cups in a row, and the Knicks had won. And if the Islanders had won again the same year that the Knicks were going to the championship, like it would have opened up the gates of hell, and you know the new world order would have happened. So the CIA had to like circumvent like the NHL and stop the Islanders from winning a championship. All so leading to nine eleven. Yeah, well, of course, nine eleven is involved too because of all this, you know, and the nine yeah. eleven. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what what do you think, Shin, about all the, uh, you know, the? Well, you the, know how I feel about Andy. Um, well, you know, it's not, you know, people. You can call it shaming. You could call it whatever you want. The RSO's purpose is to notify the public who these guys are and where these guys are. Right, and but, uh, but I'm talking about the YouTube kind of thing. The, the uh, RSOs is vital. I'm, I'm talking about, and I, I haven't come to sh- any... I thought you were talking about the shaming. Well, I'm uh, talking about uh, what I asked Joey is with regard to all the footage that's flying around on YouTube. So in other words, like, you know, the, the Hansen versus Predator T-Cat, these guys can never escape it. Um, mm-hmm. Do you think if, it, let's just say this guy made progress and he, you know, because someone just mentioned in the chat, you know, Jeff Stacy got married. He was very young when he got caught. On no, I, I, like I said, I, I, that was my, I was actually answering that question. I don't think there's any time in their life when they shouldn't be noticed, when they shouldn't be uh, uh, put on blast. I don't think there's any time for the very reason that people should know who they are. That's why. What about in the UK? I know in some places of Europe, maybe, maybe in Scandinavia, they have that, right to be forgotten law which means like 10 years after a crime they kind of erase it from the internet yeah, and is that something they do it, in the uk it too, is or no? it is yeah um but it, it's got to be under a certain sec- set of circumstances it's got to be certain offenses it's certain usually, crimes too, yeah it's usually when it's like you, you young offenders so for instance if let's just say Ambrosio got caught in England, um, that would never have been quashed, obviously because of the severity of the offence. Um, but there is terms of being a, a, a sex offender. Look, usually, it's for life. I've never known of any case where they right. they get rid of it. Um, you know, it's usually. But mm-hmm. the terms are very. You guys have a really good. Um, the RSO status over there, I think, is really good with regard to notifying people in the area that kind of stuff. We're not quite as. Um, forceful over here but there has been i was going to make a separate video about it there's been a recent slightly off topic it's been a recent landmark case in england where it's been deemed that uh, pr- uh vigilante groups have been deemed legal because there was yeah. supposed to be a challenge um mm-hmm. because, legal but, or but that's, that's another matter but it's maybe we could do a, a, something on that in the future well you know what's weird is that New York and New Jersey and Massachusetts have a private RSO list, so only like neighbors know. So you can't look people up unless they're the highest level of sex offenders. So like you don't see Sokol on the list, and you don't see some like Palumbo on the list because they're in Massachusetts or in New York. Ambrosio's still living in Connecticut. So after after he got out of prison, he stayed in the halfway house for a while, and now he's out somewhere else. And I don't know if it's you know, some kind of subsidized housing or whatever, but he's still living in Connecticut and not back in New York. So he's still on the, uh, you know, public list. Cause you can look at Connecticut's, you know, you can look at Connecticut's offenders and not New York's. So he's still, you know, on his own in Connecticut. Uh, the guy who did the most time in that sting, was that, uh, Gentilly? And that sting? No. Well, Popovich got, or Popovich. Yeah. He never came to, the house never even came to the house. Yeah, which is kind of ironic that he got the highest time and he never came to the house. But well, did he get that, did he get a sentence in his home state? Yeah, yep, he got sentenced in Virginia. That's probably why. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, the the laws were different. Um, Gentile yeah. got I think four and a half years. I want to say one year because he also had child porn. He got like three and a half for the sting and and a year to be served um, consecutively. So he got four and a half years. Which one of those two guys was the guy that wanted to be called Gramps or something like that uh, or Pops or something? Uh, that Gentile was the older guy that liked to be around naked and had that creepy uh, voicemail and then had the hotel room with the oh, camera and yeah. everything. And also Popovich happy. was like a was like a he's in his fifties, but he he was like a colonel in the military living down in Virginia. Right. He had, and didn't he and he had, he called the decoy from his anniversary party? 
Yeah, he would, uh, I guess, you know, was on the camera all the time jerking off, like, for hours and hours, like, every single day, and just, like, screaming at the decoy and making the decoy call while he jerked off, and it's brutal, and I have the chat log on that, but it, nobody can fucking read that, because it's nonstop, just, like, abuse, I mean, it's not funny at all, it's abuse, and it's, like, you know, if you read it, it'd be four hours of just him being disgusting, and, you know, it's just, it's horrible, and then there's tons of photos and videos, too, but they're all X-rated, you, know, you can't really upload them. Does, does Popovich have any phone calls? Uh, well, he, yeah, there's Popovich. Um, there's video, and there, there's phone calls, too. Um, I think that, Yeah, I think there's phone calls, too. I'm pretty sure there is. I didn't hear um, the, Gentile's phone calls were horrible, too. And Gentile's were, were horrible, but they're pretty short. It's only like a couple minutes. Yeah. They're not phone calls. They're like voice messages. Like, he left her voice messages. And they're, you know, they're just, just they're not funny. They're just disgusting. I, I'm disgusting. in love with you. That's You're my angel. You're, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, and then but yeah. then he also gets dirty too. Like you know, he gets dirty with it too, and, and that creepy voice, and you realize he's sixty four and she's thirteen, and and he's got a teenage daughter at home too. You know, it's just really creepy. So Popovich had a shit. Uh, Yap Yap says Popovich had a shit ton of phone calls. Did uh, why didn't Popovich go up? Do we know that? Was he on active duty or something? Oh, well, he was. He was an active in the military. He was a colonel, but I think he was just fucking around. I don't know how he ended up in the Connecticut chat room. But I don't think he had any real plans to go there. Um, like he never tried to go up there, and you know, it's you know he's Did a he say he day's was? drive away. I, Did he say he was coming and he didn't? Is that what he happened? might have? I don't. I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. So at some point they decided, okay, this guy's not coming. Uh, let's figure out yep, how so much. So they we did have this thing. They arrested everybody else, and then they said, you know what? Why don't we get this guy in Virginia too? Yeah. And it was like, oh, he's away with his family on vacation. Um, yeah. So they met him at the airport when uh, when he a came lot back of, in. And, and a lot of people in. ask, you know, a lot of people wonder what would have happened if Lauren didn't go to the house. They would have gotten him, just like Popovich. Yeah, so like some states, like Ohio, they had to come to the house, or maybe even California, like they had to come to the house, or it wasn't a crime. Florida, I think, was the same way, like they have to come to the house. But Kentucky, they arrested that other guy who was in a wheelchair um, in the in the Kentucky sting. There was another. There was an eighth person whose name I don't remember. Who never left his house and he was in a wheelchair and they went out to his house and arrested him. There's some quick footage of that. Um, so some states you have to go to the house and other states you don't. Yeah. Well, what about the transmission of child, uh, of uh, pornographic images to a child? Yeah, well, that's like, the th same thing, too. Like, like, I think if you're mentioning like, oh, I'm going to, you know, have sex with you or whatever, you could always and you never go. You can say, oh, well, I was just fantasizing, was just role playing, blah, blah, blah. And they might not be able to charge you. But then when you're sending nudes and stuff, then, right. you know. Then I think they can come and get you. Yeah, yeah. Right. But right. a lot of the guys don't send nudes, you know. So, but a lot of them do. And right. Popovich sent a bunch of them. And like that guy said in this thing to uh, what's his name uh, to uh, who's the guy? If I was going to do something when I had taken a shower, what's his name? Uh, the, the guy who was oh, Chris at. Urban. Yeah, Chris Urban. Yeah, 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 the yeah. guy says the crime happened as soon as you walked out the door. Exactly. You know. So if they're driving to the house, like some of the people, they pulled over because they got lost or they got spooked by another cop. So they could still get him because they left the house one, and they were on guy, the way. One guy had a one guy stole his van from a from an employer <laughs> yeah. and, and and went on a speed chase uh, going down the wrong direction on a one way street. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they can they they are on route so they can come and get you. And that one dude that uh, kept driving around and checking mailboxes to look inconspicuous. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, and they got Gentile or not Gentile, um, Tiriolo. Up in Connecticut, he never went to the house either. Like he kind of got spooked. He drove by the house, and then said, "You know what? I'm not. I'm not coming in." And then they went out and pulled him over and, and brought him in. And he didn't get RSO. Did no, he? he and Manzi didn't get RSO because they never mentioned sex. Right. You know, they the downward never dog mentioned sex. Yeah, they flirted and they said, "Yo, my, you're my soulmate, downward dog." But yeah. you can, that doesn't hold up in court, you know. Right. But they mentioned drugs and alcohol, so they got him with a charge, attempted harmful act with a minor, which could mean anything. Yeah, contributing so, to delinquency. Same right, thing. so they got sentenced to, yeah. they both got sentenced to three years, but all of it suspended and no probation. So it was a three-year suspended sentence, and that was it. But they have a felony. You know, they have a felony on their record. Right, right. But they had no probation and no jail time. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, you've, you, you've gone from one end of the spectrum to the other. You look at Gentile and Popovich, older guys, perverted, done a lifetime. Of yeah, like they should know better. Like those guys, 
you know, they really need to know better. Like, they no they are a lost like cause, that. aren't they? If you look at those guys, there's no change with those. With I understand people's feelings because it's been quite clear in the chat that some people just think, fuck them forever, and I get that. But you've got to, in my opinion, you've got to hope that people like uh, Ambrosio can be made to be less of a danger. And it does happen. People do... You know, it has happened. You've had killers who, you know, had some kind of spiritual awakening or whatever. The guys at the other end of the spectrum, there's no fucking chance for them. You know, there's no chance. But with him, maybe, maybe, you know. Yeah. All right. So Andy and Shin, um, I got to head out. Yeah. My, well, my, uh, my dance card is booked. Yeah. Um, so people in the chat, thanks for uh, being there. I haven't been able to watch the chat, but I'll go back and watch it. And, uh, and I'll talk to you guys later. Yeah. Thanks for See coming, Joey. Well. Really appreciate it, dude. All right, anytime. All right, bye, everybody. Bye. Right, so uh, thanks for Joey to, uh, for joining us because, you know, uh, how... He's, gonna, he's, a well, he, he's like, uh, I think it was him in the back of the courtroom, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, we, just so no one knows, there, there was an unidentified assailant at the back of the uh, courtroom when we went to see Long get shackled away, and he was like, he never said a word. Wasn't he in the lift with us? On the way, yeah, he was he there. Just yeah. kind of like uh, he, he didn't even look at us, did he? He didn't even make eye contact with us. It was, it was really weird. I, I, I had, I had the impression the entire time he was Joey. I, I had no idea what Joey looks like, but I had the impression because Joey had been everywhere up to that point. You know, I know he he went to all those hearings in Connecticut and stuff. Went to the pizza place, did his little pilgrimage, and I, I didn't think he'd. Uh, I think he. I thought he would be there. But, uh, I, I, um, I don't think it was because I remember Joey messaged me after it happened and he was like, oh, what did Lon Luke like? What was it like? You know, he was like, kind of excited to know the yeah, answer. Yeah, that, well, I think you told me that. Uh, but during that, I thought it could have been Joey. Oh, that's, Especially that's in what the, I thought. That's what I thought. Uh, I remember we all kept quiet. You know, we all gave each other a signal to stay quiet in the elevator, you know, <laughs> with this guy. <laughs> well, I was still kind of bursting out in laughter, to be honest. But Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, it was uh, hilarious. Yeah, that was uh, that was it just to add that mystery element to it, you know, just to have this random guy at the Who back is of the that man? Who was that man? And it, it pissed Lon off even more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, yeah, I think it pissed him off that they weren't that the place wasn't filled. Uh, who p- pissed who off? Lorne. Is uh, that what you said? What you think? He was expecting was... celebrities and and Stallone, thousands of Lone, Twain. All those type of people. Yeah, I don't you know, know actually. I mean, I remember him looking. Yeah, I remember him looking directly at me when he, when we walked through the door, and it's like, who's who's turning up to my courtroom? But it would have just. I'd love to know what was going on in his mind when he sort of scoped us all out, like wondering who we were and who from the Church of Cod we were, and you know, because yeah, but what happened to Joey was kind of messed up. You know, um, he he's allowed to be in there without question or intimidation. You know, well, of course, um, but, I mean, if you, you know, you got a young guy like him whose family are there, they're, they're, they're going to want to know who's there, aren't they? They're going to want to know what's going on. I don't, know? you know, nobody has a right to, uh, to, to, to demand to know everyone's name who's observing a court proceeding. Oh, no, certainly so, not. There's no, there's yeah. no, you know, there's a, everybody's got a legal right to be there. I'd it's, imagine if that happened to us. <laughs> I'd have secretly enjoyed it if that had well, I would have secretly too. enjoyed I would it. Have it would have been the best thing ever. How you doing, Mr. Marshall? <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you, sir? Yeah. Um, but getting back to our friend Ambrosio, is there any uh, closing comments before we wrap it up? No, I, I you know, I, I think I, I, I think he's full of shit. That's his big thing. <laughs> you know, that, that's the only thing I have to say. I don't he's think full he's of full of shit, dude. He genuinely does have a lot of problems going on. He's on medication. Um, he has suffered from depression. He's very young. He's got self-esteem issues. A lot of it is brought on himself by his refusal to, you know, using being fat as an excuse and not doing anything about it. But I don't think that his medication, his depression, is any... It, it, it has any bearing on his behavior that doesn't make you go out and want a predator you know sort of prey well yeah that, that, that's the big question i mean all these guys like lauren even try to draw this this nexus between uh depression and and this kind of deviant behavior you know and and some people's some people have pointed out that typically with depression you usually have a compromised libido if anything else 
Mm. So, you know, and, and not only that, you would think that there'd be some uh, medical testimony or something linking it. There's absolutely nothing. And it's totally just purely sympathetic, laying down, feel, feel as sorry as you can for me. I got nothing going for me. It, it, it's, it's all bullshit because the guy who came in before Chris came out was, is him. Yeah. Yeah, but even then, he didn't look too. Didn't look like a happy guy. No, he looked happy. You know, he looked no, fine. He, he he wasn't skipping like Lorne. Hey, girl, he, there was none of that. He moved in for a hug. So he moved in for a you know a yeah, very presumptuous. Mm-hmm. He came around the yeah. counter and sure. you know held out his hands like Frankenstein and moved toward her. But like, uh, yeah, yeah, movies. But anyway, so I, that that's the true guy, and a, a, everything after that is a reaction to him getting caught. Of course, yeah. I mean, he's in survival mode when he's talking to Chris. It's anything that th- that he thinks will give him an easy ride. I just believe that there is an element of him which is suffering in life. He's finding things tough, but it doesn't excuse his behaviour, in my opinion. Um, the 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 kind of attractions that he's got, I believe, are genetic because they're so strong. The twelve year old, the dirt, the you know, the child porn. It all mm-hmm. points to the fact that he is somebody like McFetry, just born with these attractions we've already well we've not done the science ourselves so we can't say for sure but we've you know we've we've done a little bit of digging and it would seem that it's been scientifically agreed now that that you know that it's a genetic thing that people are born with you know it's what you yeah. do about it that is the key do you decide to act upon those you know perversions and uh, harm a child in the process do they believe the harm in a child do they care you know there's a lot of things to consider you know but that doesn't mean that you enable behavior. If you can understand something, you're better equipped to deal with it. That's that's always been my, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, standpoint. Uh, yeah, and and he's it it it's very clear to me he has enough self awareness to to uh, uh, to let the help work if he's looking for that. You know, I, I think he knows it was wrong. I, I I mean, I think he he'd probably get out of rape class in a year and a half. A year and a half. Well, it's better than what's Lorne up to now, 10 years? I think he's seven. I think he's going for his master's. <laughs> his master's. <laughs> oh, rape class. I love that. That's just... <laughs> we, we've got to make a sitcom, dude. Yeah, I don't know whether it'd get commissioned, but it'd be a winner. <laughs> no, we do. We do. We absolutely do. We could have all the predators in the class, too. Yeah, that would just be so funny. Like, there's think there's been a rape up there. <laughs> Yeah, women are dirty <laughs> uh, you know I think it's mine yours and Adam's favourite part of the office where you know he just because I think there's been a rape up there it's just it's so good um, anyway uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up now we, I think we've uh, we, we've dug a lot thanks to Joey's insight of actually being there at the court case I mean you can't get any better cool. than, yeah you can't get any better than that can you yeah um, so it's pretty good. I think we've got a good uh, take on this guy and, you know, what his inclinations are and what he did and how he behaved. And it's up to everybody to make their own mind up. You know, do you think that um, someone of that age should have a bit of a, an easier ride because they're younger, they haven't got a fully developed judgment system? Do you believe that they should be treated the same as everybody else? Is the chance that he could be reformed? Um you know, I don't think anybody can say for certain. I'd like to be an optimist and say that Pete, someone like him can be turned around, you know. But we will we will see. We will see if there's any uh, future offences. We'll have to keep our eyes open. Um, so, um, Mr. Koala, um, thank you. Mr. Burkat, yes. <laughs> uh, cheers for that. Uh, yeah, thanks for... Um, Thanks for joining me again, dude. I really appreciate you um, Always fun, man. stopping by, so as ever. So, um, yeah, well, um, and thanks to everybody in the chat. There's been a lot of people. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, it's been something a bit different rather than talking about, uh, you know, the, well, I mean, we've talked about a few of the other Predators recently, and uh, we've got plenty more topics to come in the next few weeks and whatnot. So everybody in the chat, really, thanks a lot for coming by. Um, you know, it's it's uh, much appreciated uh, you adding to the chat as well and firing some questions at us. So, uh, Shin, dude, yep. thanks. And um, everybody in the chat, thank you. 
Uh, and we will speak to y'all later. Take it easy.